Inside this box could be one of the most popular Air Jordan 4 sneakers of the entire year. And I realize that's a big claim, but once you see them, you might get it. I think these shoes could have the same hype level of the military black Air Jordan 4s. And I'm not just saying that because this is a black and white pair of Air Jordan 4s. I'm saying that because this is one of those shoes that's not an OG colorway, but really has that same sort of OG vibe and also is incredibly wearable because it's purely a black and white Air Jordan. But here we go, here's the box. I bought my pair from Fine Line 1721. You might recognize the FedEx box. Used to be Home Depot box. He's one of the OGs in the sneaker and sneaker YouTube game. But inside the FedEx box, we've got another box. We've got the Air Jordan 4 White Thunder. Now this is a pair of shoes. It doesn't drop till August. I don't remember the exact date, but I'll let you guys know as soon as we get into the official review later on in the video. And I've got to say, as far as the box is concerned, the first impressions, pretty decent. I like when Jordan brand changes up the box on their sneakers. Not all the time, <laughs> but some of the time. But in this case, I'm into it. This box comes in this sort of white satin finish accented by these glossy splatter print details. On the top of the box, you've got your flight text with the jump man in the middle in black. And then the sides of the box are pretty plain. They're just kind of the same white with the splatter print detail. And I think it's cool. I like when they use this sort of glossy texture to change up the look of the box. It always catches the light nicely. I'm into it. Of course, in one end of the box, you've got the size tag. Now in this case, as you can see, I had to grab a size 10 because unfortunately I was a little bit late and uh, all the size nines had sold out. So, grab the size 10. Good news is, is that I have access to other Air Jordan 4s in size 10s, so uh, I can sort of compare it that way. It's a roundabout way of doing it, but it works. Basically, I have a size 10 pair of Fire Red 4s and a size nine pair of Fire Red 4s, and I can try them on and see how each one fits, and then try this one on and compare it to the size 10. Let you guys know that way. Again, roundabout way of doing it, but it works. The official colorway of this shoe is black, white, black. And uh, of course, this is the White Thunder 4s, which essentially is a variation on the classic Thunder Force. Well, let's get into the box. I have yet to see these guys. Very nice. Very nice. Simple and clean. Now, it doesn't look like they come with another set of laces, which I guess is fine. Not a big deal. I wouldn't have minded a white set of laces, but I'll be honest with you, I probably wouldn't switch them out anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter that much. But I'm going to be honest, pretty much exactly what I expected, <laughs> at least from first impressions. I am going to try these guys on. I am going to wear them around for a bit and then give you guys a more detailed review later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. But um, overall, not bad. Very clean. Very wearable. And again, like I said, it could be one of the most popular sneaker releases of the year. To be fair, I thought that about the oxidized fours, but those were like a white cream and green pair of fours and not everyone loves white slash cream slash green uh but i do think most people love white and black so i don't know i think this is a better chance of popping now will it sell out i genuinely couldn't tell you but i do think that there is a better chance of this shoe selling out than a lot of the other fours that have dropped this year and especially because this shoe is a variation of a classic air jordan 4 colorway the thunder fours which wasn't an OG colorway, it released back in 2006 alongside the Lightning Force as part of an online exclusive drop. So although it's not an OG colorway, there is just a huge amount of hype behind those colorways. So I'm not totally surprised that they're doing different color accents on the Thunder Force because it's a great color block. We've had the regular Thunders, we've had the Red Thunders, and now we have the White Thunders. And they're clean. They are very, very clean. So let me throw these guys on feet, see how they fit, see how they look, and I'll get back to you guys. Honestly, this shoe's pretty dope. It's one of those staple shoes that you leave by your door and you throw on when you don't know exactly what you want to throw on, or if you have a fit that goes perfectly with this. And I mean, hey, the materials aren't amazing on this shoe, but this sort of uh, faux or synthetic nubuck probably will hold up to the elements better than an actual nubuck. But of course, we'll get into the materials in a second. If you guys want to grab a pair of these for yourself, they release officially, or at least as of right now, officially on August 24th for a retail price of $215 in full family sizing. And I love when Jordan Brand releases pairs in full family sizing. Maybe it's because I've got a full family now, so I actually buy shoes in full family sizing, but uh, it's nice when they do that. And they definitely should do that for all their GR releases. So it is nice that they're continuing that trend with a pair of shoes, which I'm sure will be popular. And of course, if you don't want to wait over a month to grab this pair of shoes, you can grab them right now for resale, either through Fine Line 1721 or through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. But it's a very simple, very wearable, and very clean pair of Air Jordan 4s. And that's why I think this is going to be one of the most popular Air Jordan 4s that releases all year. But with that being said, why don't we dive into the materials and make up the Air Jordan 4 white thunder so starting off around the toe of the sneaker you've got this uh presumably synthetic new buck material that feels all right that wraps around the mud guard of the shoe and actually around the entire upper of the shoe you've got it on the toe of the sneaker it wraps around to the heel of the sneaker you've got it on the eye stays of the sneaker it's everywhere on this shoe i mean in most ways this is essentially a thunder four there's not too much different about this shoe versus a pair of thunder fours now quality wise it's meh for a 215 dollars pair of shoes i'm disappointed i'm not gonna lie but it's not like not par for the course <laughs> for Jordan sneakers. It's kind of standard for what you usually get, especially with more GR releases like this, general releases like this, for those of you that don't know what GR stands for. This is one of those colorways that Jordan brand is absolutely just pumping out. 
thousands and thousands and thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of pairs. And uh, for something like this, it's as wearable as this, I think that's fine. But of course, because they're creating so many of these, they're gonna make some material concessions and the new buck on the upper of the shoe is absolutely one of those concessions. It just feels like weirdly velvety and not in like a good new buck way. It feels too, I don't know. It feels, I can't really describe it in any other way other than synthetic. It just doesn't feel real. But hey, maybe it's real and it's just a very cheap and incredibly consistent uh, <laughs> finish on a new buck. I don't know. Who knows? But either way, continuing back in the shoe, of course, at the bottom of the tongue, you've got your black netting detail that you have on most pairs of Air Jordan 4s. Obviously, the color change is based on the colorway. And then underneath that, you've got this white mesh. Now, this white mesh is, of course, the first instance of the accent color on the shoe. Uh, on the Thunder 4s, it's yellow. On the Red Thunders, it's red. And on the White Thunders, it's white. Continuing up on the shoe, like I mentioned before, you've got more of that black nubucky type material on the eye stays of the sneaker. You've also got these white lace loop areas, or I guess wing details or lace eyelet details, which you have on every pair of Air Jordan 4s, except of course in this shoe, they're white instead of any other color. Weaving through the eyelets of the shoe, you've got these black flat laces. And like I mentioned, I don't believe these come with an extra set of laces, at least mine didn't. So I don't think that they do. That being said, the black flat laces are fine. I definitely wouldn't change them out. I think they look great in the shoe. They match the black on the upper of the shoe well. Laces don't always match the upper color of the shoe um, because it's just hard to dye laces and it's hard to match colors between materials. So I understand that, but with black, it's just black on black, so it works. Continuing up in the shoe, of course, underneath the laces, you've got more of that white mesh and black netting. And then continuing towards the top of the tongue, you've got more of that black nubucky type material. And sewn into the middle of the tongue, you've got this black flight tag. Obviously embroidered into the center, you've got the Jumpman and the flight text in white. And then on the back of the tongue, you've got another classic patch sewn on, and that, of course, is the Air Jordan patch, which is upside down because people used to wear their Air Jordan 4s with the tongues out, and it would show the words Air Jordan facing the right way if you wore them with the tongue flipped out. People don't really do that as much anymore, so that's... Actually, I haven't seen anyone do that, unironically, in years. So it's just Jordan Brand giving a nod to their legacy, which I think is pretty cool, actually. And then moving inside the sneaker, you've got this black, kind of fuzzy fabric sock liner. And then rounding off the inside of the sneaker, you've got a pretty standard black insole with the Jumpman on the heel in white. As far as sizing and fit, the White Thunder Air Jordan 4s, as you probably would have expected, fit true to size. No, they don't fit me true to size because I have a size 10 and I'm a size 9. But again, when I compare these to the Fire Red 4s and a size 10, which I know fit true to size, um, they fit exactly the same. So I'm confident in saying that these fit true to size. It's a standard pair of fours. They didn't change anything up. They didn't mess with the algorithm. <laughs> this shoe is basically exactly the same as every other pair of fours. And for me, I wear my fours true to size and you probably do as well. If you don't, or if you've never tried on a pair of fours, I definitely recommend trying on a pair of fours at your local sneaker store. You can probably find oxidized green sitting at your local Foot Locker right now. So try those on first before you buy these. If you want to buy these for resale or just even on release day, just to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you because $215 is not cheap and it would suck to take these home, try them on and realize, oh, they don't really fit and then you have to return them or in some cases you can't return them so it's always good to make sure you're grabbing the right size but my thought is if you're buying these online and you can't try these on true to size and you should be just fine continuing back in the shoe you've got more of that black netting in the midfoot of course you've got your white mesh underneath accenting the entire look and then moving around to the heel of the shoe you've got your black standard tpu heel tab with the white jump man in the center nothing really special happening on the back of the shoe just your standard air jordan 4 stuff like just a basic Jumpman, no Nike Air, just a standard Jordan 4 heel tab, which actually isn't so standard anymore. We don't get these as much on sneakers because each Jordan 4 has like a different story or something going on where they change up the heel tab. So it's actually kind of refreshing just to have a basic heel tab. Then moving down on the sneaker, you get to another white thunder accent. And that of course is the white midsole. You've got your black rubber from the outsole wrapping up onto the side of the shoe, creating sort of a black and white look. Same sort of deal on the medial side. And then you've got your visible air unit on the heel of the shoe. And then finally rounding off the sneaker, you've got a primarily black rubber outsole accented by a white jump man in the center of the midfoot and a white panel on the forefoot of the shoe. So no, this shoe isn't anything that exciting. It's not anything that special, but I think that's why the shoe is going to do so well. This is one of those colorways that you can wear with really anything. and it it'll look good. It's black and white. I mean, it doesn't get simpler than that. And the color blocking on this shoe works really well. I mean, it's based on the Thunder 4s, which is a classic pair of 4s that people really love. And I think that was honestly the right move. I mean, the Red Thunders are popular, the regular Thunders are popular, and I think these White Thunders are going to be very popular, especially because black is the main color on this shoe. We actually haven't gotten too many pairs of black Air Jordan 4s this year. I mean, we have gotten the Bread 4s, but most of the other ones were white. We had the Military Blue 4s, we had the Oxidized Green 4s, we had the White Sulfur 4s, or Yellow Sulfur 4s, or whatever they were called. Um, so it's nice to get a pair of shoes. It's primarily black. And with the accent color being white, again, wearability is at an all time high. I'm giving it a 10 in wearability. Now I don't like predicting resale because I feel like that's something that just can't be predicted. But I will say that I think that these will probably sell out. 
I think that they might not sell out incredibly quickly, but I do think they'll fare better than the oxidized greens or the sulfur yellows or whatever they ended up being called. I forget what the name of those shoes were, but I don't think they'll be as popular as the military blues or the red fours. I think these are gonna be one of those GR shoes that moves very quickly. And then in two years, when everyone's worn their pairs, the pairs that are still DS will probably be more expensive than retail. That's my guess, it's as far as I can go with it. But I definitely think this is a shoe that if you want, you should try and grab as soon as possible because I do think that they'll move relatively quickly. But I also don't think these are shoes that are gonna resell for like $400. I'm, I'm sure they'll be closer to retail than to that when it comes to resale. But, but again, just to be safe, if you want these and you wanna grab them on release day, grab them as soon as possible because I do think these will move. But hey, that pretty much wraps things up on my end. I would love to know your thoughts on the White Thunder 4s and whether you think Jordan brand is going in the right direction with these newer colorways of the Air Jordan 4s. Let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.